I did not want to have to do dialysis. I wanted to just run away and pretend like none of this was happening, but it was, and I had to make the decision on which form of dialysis I wanted to do. I'm going to focus on peritoneal dialysis because that's what I'm doing, that's what I've experienced. This video will also help those that are trying to compare peritoneal dialysis to hemo, though hemo won't be what I focus on because I haven't experienced that. It might be helpful to get out a piece of paper and a pen or pencil and make a pros and cons chart. I think that'll help kind of organize your thoughts as you try to decide which form of peritoneal dialysis will work best for you. Now there's two forms of peritoneal dialysis. One of them is ambulatory, that's the manual form of peritoneal dialysis. And the second one is automated peritoneal dialysis and that's using a machine called the cycler. I made a list of 10 ways that manual and using the cycler form of peritoneal dialysis are similar. First one is you're going to need to get a peritoneal dialysis catheter placed and that's a surgery, it's a day surgery. Second one is these two forms of peritoneal dialysis are interchangeable. So if the power goes out and you can't use the cycler, you're able to use the manual to fill and to drain. The third one is therapy is done every day or every night so that you are regularly able to remove the extra fluid and toxins from your blood. The fourth one is you are going to be the one in charge of your peritoneal dialysis. You're going to be the one that sets up and gets ready to perform therapy. The fifth point is that you can start therapy whenever you want. You just need to make sure that you give yourself the full time needed to complete therapy. The sixth one is your diet and what you're going to eat is very similar, pretty much the same between these two methods of peritoneal dialysis. The seventh one is you're going to have a big shipment full of boxes every month. The eighth one is you're able to travel with either one of these forms of peritoneal dialysis. And I've done both. I've done trips, long trips in the car, and I've also flown on a plane. The ninth point is that you're going to lose protein doing this form of peritoneal dialysis. So you're going to have to make sure that you eat a little bit more protein. The 10th point is that the dialysis fluid contains dextrose. So your body is going to absorb a little bit of that sugar. Now I didn't notice that at all. It didn't really affect me, but maybe with somebody who has diabetes, it might affect them a little bit more. 10 different ways that these two forms of peritoneal dialysis are different. Now the first one is when the therapy is performed. When you do the manual form of peritoneal dialysis, it is done throughout the day. Now when you use a cycler, that will happen overnight while you sleep. Second way that these two methods are different is the length in therapy. So when you do manual therapy, that takes 16 hours and you'd have four exchanges that last about four hours. That's, that was for me. Now, when I use the cycler, that the therapy lasted for eight hours and I also had four exchanges, but those only lasted for two hours. So I'll give you an example of what a day looked like for me. So when I was doing manual exchanges, I started at six o'clock in the morning and then that dwelled until 10 o'clock, and then I did an exchange then. The next one was at two o'clock, did an exchange then, and then the last exchange happened at six o'clock, so that by 10 o'clock I was able to drain and be done with therapy. Now an example of using the cycler was I needed eight hours of therapy, so I'd make sure I was set up and ready to go by 9.30 so I could start therapy at 10 o'clock. So therapy went from 10 o'clock to six o'clock in the morning and then I could um, detach myself anytime after six o'clock. Now the third way that these two methods are different is the amount of fluid that is used. So when you, when you do manual peritoneal dialysis, for me I went through four, again four exchanges, each with 2,000 milliliters of fluid. So in a day, that equaled 8,000 milliliters of fluid that I put into my body and drained out. Now when you use the cycler, I used 
two bags, each with 6,000 milliliters. And those were broken up into four exchanges. So through that eight hour length of therapy, I went through 12,000 milliliters of fluid. The fourth way that these methods are a little bit different is the cycler can be a little more difficult for somebody who is a light sleeper. The cycler will beep at you if the fluid is not draining quick enough or isn't filling quick enough. So if you do not want your sleep interrupted, then maybe the cycler isn't the best way for you. The fifth one is with the cycler, you do have more fluid dwelling in your peritoneal cavity than you would doing manual. So you can feel it's there, it's a little more uncomfortable. The sixth way that they're different is when you're hooked up to the IV pool with manual, there you have to kind of pull around that IV pool if you wanna go somewhere, it's a little bit of a hassle. Now when you're attached to the cycler, you're able to get up and kind of move around. They have extensions, which will give you more room to walk around. So I was able to get to my bed, to the bathroom really easy during the night. The seventh point I wanna make is the cycler does use a little more supply. So you have a cassette and all the tubing is just more. So when you get your supplies delivered, if you're using the method of the cycler, there will be a few more boxes. Eighth point I wanna make is with the cycler, you can set it up, getting it prepared for therapy at any time of the day. The ninth point I want to make is if you're doing manual, there's a lot more hand washing that you have to do. There's a lot more time when you're hooking up and deattaching, because that will happen at least four times during the day. The tenth point I wanted to make is it's going to be a little bit different traveling. So if you're just doing a day trip or an overnight trip, I think manual will be a little bit easier because there won't be so much to take with you to be able to travel. But if you're at the airport and you're going to be flying, in some ways having the freedom during the day is easier. You have to take the machine with you, the cycler. And I think I'll make a video um, giving tips on how to travel when you're on peritoneal dialysis. When choosing what form of peritoneal dialysis will work for you, or even comparing peritoneal dialysis to hemo, I think it will be helpful if you ask yourself these three questions. The first question is, what is the most important thing I need in my daily life to keep it feeling as normal as possible? That's also thinking about your week to week and your month to month, what that would look like. The second one is when you do peritoneal dialysis, you have to do it every day or every night. And is that something that you are able to do? And is it something that you are willing to do? The third question you need to ask yourself is, am I willing to make room in my home for all these supplies? I had to sacrifice a lot of things to be able to do peritoneal dialysis at home, just like Anybody would have to sacrifice a lot to be able to do peritoneal or hemodialysis. But after making a pros and cons chart and listing what was the most important thing to me, I was able to feel confident and comfortable with the decision that I made. And I hope this video is able to help you to have a better picture of what peritoneal dialysis at home might look like so you can make the best decision for you and your family. I want to make sure I thank you all for watching my videos and for liking my videos and making comments because anytime anybody interacts with my videos, it helps it to be able to be spread to those who are also suffering from kidney failure and are maybe wondering, you know, what form of dialysis is best for them. So thank you so much.